Hey guys, what is up? It's Vanessa and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another what's for dinner for you guys. I am sharing, I think, five different meals with you tonight. Some are recipes and some you guys are just real life because mama was tired and didn't feel like cooking. So if this sounds good to you and you like cooking and cleaning and just silly mama vlogs, then go ahead and subscribe. All right guys, let's get into the first dinner of the week. All right, so if you're not new to my channel, you know my favorite saying is I am not reinventing the wheel over here, guys. So last week I did a freezer meal video and I made a few shepherd's pies to have in the freezer for, well, nights like this. So I pulled this baby out in the morning. It was still a little bit frozen, so it did end up taking a little while to cook. I ended up putting this in the oven at about 350 for about an hour. And you guys know I can't do anything or be in the kitchen without MJ and Charlie checking up on me. Okay, so shepherd's pie seems to be something different wherever you're from. In my house, it is ground beef, cream corn, and mashed potatoes. Sometimes it's cream of mushroom and peas, but we don't switch it up that often. Here it is guys, pure comfort food at its best, perfect for fall. Okay, so kitchen sink soup, or better known as everything but the kitchen sink soup in my house, basically using up things in my fridge and putting them in a soup. So I have some minced garlic, basil, uh, oregano, and some garlic powder that I'll use for seasoning along with salt and pepper. I have some Parmesan cheese and some marble cheese that I'm gonna use up. I have some bacon that I food prepped earlier in the week. Check out my food prep video. Uh, I just cooked that up in the bacon. It's nice to have for BLTs and whatnot, so I'm gonna throw that in. Who doesn't like bacon and soup? I have some chicken broth and some milk, a little bit of rice that I'm gonna throw in there. Here is that frozen tortellini that I had in the freezer so we are literally throwing it all in here guys I have some frozen corn I was gonna use this spinach but when I thought it out I didn't like the look of it at least not for soup I have a few carrots to use up some celery and some red onions that I food prepped earlier earlier in the week <laughs> Now I'm just gonna go ahead and chop everything up fairly small because I want this to cook quickly. This is not a soup that I want to sit on the stove all day. I just wanna get it in my belly. So I'm gonna cut up the bacon really fine too because I'm just gonna kind of saute that with all of the carrots, onions, and celery just to kind of incorporate that bacon flavor because who doesn't want that in their soup or at least in our house, everybody does. So I'm adding about half a stick of butter. That's about four tablespoons into my Dutch oven here. You could do less or more depending on how much soup you're going to mix now here's some red onions that I food prepped last or no these are two weeks old guys look at how amazing they still look I swear by this method check out my food prep or my weekly food prep motivational videos that I do every week if you want to see some tips on storing your produce so dump everything in here along with the bacon and stir it up All right, so part of the reason I love doing these dinner videos and just showing you guys is don't be afraid to go in the kitchen and experiment. Throw in all of your favorite flavors. For me, it's Italian seasonings, garlic, all of those things always make for something yummy. So I know when I make soup, I want uh, onion, celery, and carrots. That's a basic flavor base. I know I'm gonna want basil and oregano and garlic powder. So it's kind of like a soup of all my favorite things and using up what's in my fridge. So I'm gonna cook these down for three to five minutes just to soften it up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add about a quarter cup of flour. This is gonna create a roux, which is gonna make your soup a little bit thick. If you don't want a thicker soup, leave this out. It could be more of a, of a thin broth if that's what you enjoy. So I'm gonna go ahead and cook off this flour for about 45 
five to 60 seconds. You don't have to sit there forever. You just wanna cook that raw flour out. And then I'm going to add four cups of chicken broth and just a splash of milk. You could use cream or half and half. If you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that's not something we typically have in the fridge, but we always have Natrell or lactose-free milk. Now check out this rice, you guys. I food prepped this um, earlier on the weekend because we're making fried rice this week and I cannot get it out. It is in there. So I have to get right in there with my hands. Don't worry about it. They're clean. I'm going to add a little bit of rice and I'm going to add that tortellini. And then I'm going to let it simmer or boil for probably about 10 minutes and then add my corn and my peas. I don't want them to sit in there too long because they're frozen and they basically just need to thaw out in your soup. Once that's all heated through, I'm going to add in as much cheese as I'd like. I think I added about a quarter cup of Parmesan and probably about a cup of grated cheddar and mozza or mozza or marble cheese. And then I'll just go ahead and stir it all together. I'm going to end up adding some green onions just because I have them prepped in my fridge. Same thing, guys. These green onions are going on two weeks. Amazing, right? Right. All right. So stir this all together and you are ready to eat. Now, the only thing I was missing was a can of tomatoes. So I last minute decided to add some tomato sauce just because I really felt it was missing that acidity. If you have canned tomatoes, highly recommend you add those. I will definitely be doing it next time. I never make tortellini soup without tomatoes. You can go ahead and top this however you'd like. Some bacon, cheese, sour cream, that would be so good. It would make it extra rich. I opted for green onions and French's fried onions. So literally on this night, I was supposed to make beef dip sandwiches. Stay tuned because that's at the end. I ended up making fish and chips, you guys. I was beyond exhausted. I'm showing you a little nest hack here where I cut off the top of the bag and use it as a tie to tie up. I do this with my vegetables, my french fries, everything. Something my mom taught me. Now, I also always season my french fries before I bake them in the oven. I know, guys, I'm showing you how to make frozen food. You're welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these in. Usually I do it for about 25 to 30 minutes at about 425 or 450. And there's MJ making sure I'm doing a good job. Next up, I need to find some gravy or poutine sauce because we're not just having straight up fish and chips, you guys. We are having fish and poutine. So my favorite poutine sauce here in Canada is Saint Hubert or Saint Hubert poutine gravy so it's just a little bit of a spicier almost a thinner more barbecue sauce gravy it's super super good if you can find it absolutely try it So leave a comment down below if you have ever tried poutine. This is far from authentic because it's shredded mozzarella and not cheese curds, but still delicious nonetheless. Just pile as much cheese as you'd like and drown it in gravy. Also, I'm extremely fussy and I only like Kraft brand tartar sauce. I don't like homemade, I don't like Heinz, I won't even look at it. All right, guys, we have another super simple meal tonight. We ended up with Taco Tuesday. So this one was extra exciting because we are trying these new cheesy blasted um, old El Paso shells. They're kind of like Doritos, I guess. The kids were really excited and actually they turned out to be super super good i ended up sending two of the kids with taco salads in their lunch the next day with those shells crumpled up and they said it was super super good a lot of times we do like walking tacos where you just put all of your taco toppings inside a bag of doritos so it was kind of reminiscent of that i'm just going to chop up some tomatoes and lettuce per usual go ahead and toast up all of our uh, shells. I've got the ground beef ready to go. Everything's laid out and tacos are a go. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so these are two things I have talked about making for quite a while on my channel. Pan fried potatoes and honey mustard Italian dressing marinated chicken. So that's what we're having. I have some chicken breasts here that I will split down the middle just to make them a little bit thinner. I have some honey Dijon vinaigrette and some golden Italian dressing. Now this is an idea I got from Jessica O'Donohue. If you don't know who she is, then you must be living under a rock. Sorry to offend if you don't know who she is, but she is my favorite YouTuber. So I just feel like everybody should watch her. Uh, basically we're gonna marinate in those dressings and we're gonna fry up some potatoes thinly sliced in a frying pan. And now I don't know about you guys, but here in the fall and winter, it's casseroles and gravies and sauces. But this week or today, at least, I just wanted something a little bit lighter. So I decided to marinate these chicken breasts. Like I said, I have seen Jessica on Jessica O'Donoghue's channel do it all the time and it looked delicious. So I said, we're gonna do it. So throw everything into a Ziploc bag, let it marinate as long or as little as you'd like. It's just equal parts of the dressings and until the chicken breasts are coated. All I'm gonna do is scrub up my potatoes potatoes and slice them relatively thinly. If you had a mandolin, you could use that as well. And that's just so that they don't take forever to cook in our frying pan. Now, if you wanna cut a little edge off the side to create a flat surface so that your potato's not rolling all over the place, that would be a great idea. And in a minute, you're about to see who is watching me slice my potatoes. <music> Just in case you're new here, say hello to Charlie, my 100 and nearly 80 pound, 10 month old English Mastiff. And I swear he's a vegetarian. He loves carrots and celery and potatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish slicing up my potatoes. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm using my big rock heritage pan. I have showed you guys this, it's a nonstick pan. I would highly recommend using a nonstick pan for this. I put half a stick of butter down in there to melt with a little bit of canola oil. And I'm gonna go ahead and layer my potatoes. So I'm gonna do one layer, season them with salt and pepper, and then continue on like that throw a lid on about medium to medium high heat so that it's going to basically steam and fry them a little bit. Once they're cooked and steamed, you're gonna to toss them around and you're gonna see you're gonna have some crispy potatoes, some soft cooked potatoes. This is probably the best combination of potatoes I've ever had. This is something I always do on the barbecue. I got this idea from Courtney over at the Bryles Bunch. I will link her channel below. I was just like, girl, the fact that you have taught me to do this in the house is amazing and I love them. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my chicken down on my grill pan. One thing I will say is don't be tempted to stir these up. Go ahead and let them sit for 10 or 15 minutes just to really get that crust going. There's Jamie being a good dad and plating up dinner for Kylie. Now here you go, as promised, your beef dip sandwiches. So I'm gonna say ahead of time that the au jus that came out of this is not the way I would typically like it to be. And I think it's just because I have very fatty roast beef, but it was amazing. So we are starting this in the crock pot. This is a cut of meat that I got from Walmart. It actually was delicious. I used two cups of beef broth, a package of onion soup mix, about two whirls around of a low sodium soy sauce, and as much or as little Worcestershire sauce as you'd like. To me, this is what really makes that beef flavor, so I kinda go a little heavy handed. I am also gonna add a lot of black pepper. You guys know that we love that here. And then I'm gonna cook it on low for eight hours. So one thing I am going to say about this is I wished I had 
uh, mashed potatoes and I could have made a gravy out of this. It was so, so good. But I will say I primarily made this because I know Jamie loves these sandwiches. But just look at this falling apart. First, let's take that string out of there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get what's supposed to be used for ground beef, but it's actually really good for shredding up your meat. And it's kind of a good gauge to know if your meat is tender enough to shred if it falls apart like this when you're using it. Now, you can see this is a pretty fatty roast, but in my opinion, fat makes flavor. So it wasn't ideal for getting my au jus to be that kind of darkness that I wanted, but you guys, amazing. up doing here was grabbing a mesh strainer and just strained out all of those juices again they would have made a delicious gravy after I just finished saying that I was getting tired of casseroles and gravies already but I'm never tired of roast beef gravy next thing I'm gonna do is throw together a Caesar salad <laughs> So let's talk bread. I went ahead and grabbed two different kinds of rolls because I knew that we would make sandwiches this weekend and I wasn't sure what Jamie wants. So I grabbed those panini rolls, set them aside, we're not using them. I ended up going with a big white French baguette. I just thought it would be more substantial to holding up to dipping it in the juice but these were probably the best roast beef sandwich I have ever had in my life. I served it with some mozzarella. I had some Swiss as an option as well, but this with the Caesar salad, even though the juice part didn't turn out great, it was delicious. The only thing I might've done was toasted the buns with a little bit of garlic butter and it would have put it right over the edge. And there you have it guys. That wraps up another week of meals that I fed my blended family of six. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see all of you in my next video. Take care.